nearly two-thirds of Democratic primary voters want a different nominee. Two-thirds. If you break it down by age, 94% of Democratic primary voters under the age of 30, 94% say they don't want Biden. That is a stunning number. That's right. Super unpopular, but the most voted for person in all of history. Now, there's a clip that I want to show you, and I'm going to give you my reason as to why I truly believe they have always been reaching for guns. A nation that once had a promising future, high levels of education, and a solid middle class falling into pieces. Inflation levels reaching a record of 54%. A $7 billion debt leaving the country unable to pay for imports of food, fuel, or medicine. And what is left is increasingly unaffordable. Life in Sri Lanka completely upended. And this, the protesters' last resort. A week of political chaos. Protesters in Sri Lanka taking over the president's home, his office, the residence of the prime minister. <laughs> Fed up, angered by the country's worst economic crisis since its independence from Britain in 1948. Protesters demanding both the president and the prime minister step down immediately. We trust politicians and we lost everything that we have. We are stay here until they resign. Protesters clashing with riot police in the streets, escalating violence in the capital city of Colombo. They demand the immediate departure of the prime minister, now interim president, who has declared a nationwide emergency and announced a curfew in the capital. They don't want you to be able to arm yourselves, to be able to protect yourselves, to be able to fight back if the government goes rogue, because they don't want this, but they don't want this with armed citizens, <laughs> is my opinion. And the reason why I believe this is because of this. Joe Biden on Wednesday was safely sworn in as the 46th president of the United States in a city filled with armed troops and barricaded fences. Instead of millions of spectators taking to the streets of Washington, D.C. to celebrate the inauguration ceremony, 25,000 National Guard troops were placed to prepare against any possible threat on the big day. Biden's inauguration ceremony also took place under a never-before-seen level of security launched by the U.S. Secret Service. To prevent people from attending the ceremony, major bridges, metro stations, and streets in the city were closed as well. Gun control. For black Americans, we know that gun control has ultimately been about people control. What a lot of Democratic-controlled segregationist governments after the Civil War attempted to deny black men and women their freedom. They instituted black codes, largely to deny the Second Amendment from newly freed slaves. And so today in our urban centers, innocent black folk may not be the victims of the Klan or of white racism, but we are the victims of merciless criminals that are armed and don't give a darn about gun control laws. How dare you talk about taking away a constitutional right? The Second Amendment is not about guns. It's about freedom. I also want to thank the NRA for its legacy. The National Rifle Association was started, founded by religious leaders who wanted to protect free slaves from the Ku Klux Klan. They would raise money, buy arms, show the free slaves how to use those arms, and protect their families. It has always been that way in history. Anytime that you take away the rights for the citizens to protect themselves, you find a tyrannical government. It has nothing to do with the violence really being about guns. Because regardless of what you want to say, guns don't kill people. You can lay a gun on the table all day, it does nothing. It's really the heart of a person. And if a heart of a person is bent on killing someone, they'll find the means to do it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gun. They're out for blood. Guns just happen to make it easier. <laughs> but a murderer is a murderer. And another thing, they know that they are unpopular. They know this. I mean, they know. 
they are already pushing the American people to the edge. And they also know that in order for them to bring in phase two, they're going to need to make sure y'all ain't got no weapons because <laughs> y'all ain't gonna like it. So as much as they talk about gun reform and you know mental health checks, like why don't why don't we deal with mental health? Like why don't we get down to the root of what's going on in people and find a way to kind of deal with that? And then you won't have to worry about crime. And I think that crime really stems a lot from poverty and there's so many other issues that are really the problem instead of the weapon itself. I don't think for a second that any of this stuff is by chance what it is that they're doing. You know, they're trying to make it seem so bad that, that people will be convinced to give away their rights because they know they can't take them. So they have to willingly or they have to create a scene for you to willingly be able to submit more of your rights to the government and I'm not about to do that I am founder of Warriors Arise Ministries spiritual life spiritual maturity and spiritual warfare and we are engaged in a great spiritual conflict in our nation the current trajectory in which the Obama administration is leading our country is evident through policy that is being executed sometimes with executive orders. It should cause every leader, especially that of the clergy, within both the white and black community to arise and speak truth to power. To forsake this highest call is to surrender our families and our faith. We have no option but to draw the line in the sand and stand against this and any arrogant effort to tamper with our constitutional right to bear arms? Should we be silent to a political agenda that is contrary to the truth that God, guns, and the Constitution work together in order to enable us what we enjoy today? This current administration is far from the truth. This agenda is becoming more and more obvious to all that it's a distraction. It's a reason, it's an excuse to carry out an ideology that is more evident every, every day and every week that goes by, that it is anti-American.